She captivates the attention of the world, and tonight a baby hippo at the zoo continues to be an inspiration to human families. As medical reporter Liz Bonus found out, many shared the same health challenges when they were born early. Liz? Hey guys, good evening to you. They were the first group of Fiona's fans, you might say. The families with premature babies who knew the obstacles that Fiona would fight to overcome. Tonight, with the help of prenatal specialists at St. Elizabeth Healthcare, we share just what it takes for babies and baby hippos to survive against the odds. I was the first one to pick her up when she was born. Think of it as picking up a 29-pound miracle. Miss Fiona, as she's known, put Christina Gorsuch and a team of animal experts at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens in full emergency mode when she was born six weeks early. No hippo calf had survived. There was no information about hippo calves being born early surviving. Her preemie concerns? Her weight. It should have been close to 80 pounds. Her body temperature. We picked her up and we just had her bundled in blankets and everybody was snuggling her. But part of the reason we wanted to share the story is that many from all around the world could relate to Fiona's story for a very specific reason. Many of the challenges that she went through as a preemie, a lot of humans go through as well. We've been watching um, videos of baby Fiona following her whole story. Kaylee and her two-year-old daughter Madeline followed Fiona's story. Was baby Fiona born early? And so did Monica Hurd. Her daughter Kennedy was being nurtured inside this neonatal intensive care unit. She was born six weeks early. One of the biggest challenges for baby Kennedy. The biggest challenge was eating because when they are that preterm, they have trouble breathe, sucking, and swallowing all, all at the same time. To get Kennedy's weight up, mom started breastfeeding right away. She had a tube in her nose um, for anything that she did not get out of me. For Miss Fiona, however, something additional was needed. There's not a like, go buy some hippo formula off the shelf situation. So Fiona's care team had to take her mother's milk and have a lab develop a similar formula. It too had to be fed through a tube feeding. She had eight feedings a day. Just as Fiona needed humans to fill in where her own mom couldn't. I can sense their fears, I can sense their excitements, their frustrations. One of the fears of both care teams, those milestones of their heart rates, their respiratory rate, their oxygen levels. The other big concern, cognitive growth and development. For Fiona, that meant. Would she know how to behave like a hippo? Sure enough, Miss Fiona figured that out when she hit her ideal weight of 87 pounds. And she's hit every milestone since then as if she was born at the, on the right schedule. As for baby Kennedy, who's up from. Five pounds, four ounces to almost double her weight, put 10 pound Kennedy against 500 pound Fiona now, and it's amazing how they share similar success. So healthy and a squirmer and um, she's getting chunky rolls, which is fantastic. Uh, we are so happy baby <laughs> Kennedy is now doing great. So is baby Fiona. Aww. She is now up to 500 pounds. And by the time she's full grown, she'll actually be about 3,000. Wow. Yeah. And they, yeah, the similarities stopped <laughs> way back. <laughs> but it, they both smiled in those photos. Is, they were both smiling. Just darling. They're both happy to have little rolls on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the things you don't want when you're older. <laughs> by the way, she got a lot of human inspiration, like things they had to think about to even get Fiona to live. And we're going to share more on that tonight Aww. at 11. Can't get enough. Thanks, I know. Liz. I feel that way, too. <laughs> I just loved working on those. Thank you.